This is the Caledonia Way, cycle route 78. It starts here in Campbelltown at the southern end of the Kintyre Peninsula and travels all the way to Inverness, the capital of the Scottish Highlands. This video covers the first section of the route from here in Campbelltown to Oban, 120 miles. This is the first section of the Caledonia Way. I've previously cycled two other sections and you can see those videos after this one. In summer, a weekend ferry from the mainland links with Glasgow trains, so getting to the start is easy. Or for a real challenge, ride here, as I did with Sean McFarlane along the Kintyre Gravel Bike Way. That is pretty tough. The whole Caledonia way to Inverness is a significant challenge. Because much of this first section is on road, some people skip some or all of it. But that's a mistake. However, it is very easy to underestimate. Look at that gradient profile. Now this may be a coastal road, but it's not flat. There's lots of little climbs and little descents. It's actually quite difficult to get your rhythm going. Then again, you just get energy from your surroundings. There is a lot to see along this east coast. Grip is a statue by Anthony Gormley, he of Angel of the North fame. It stands sentinel in front of Saddle Castle. The grounds are open to the public. Carradale is a little further, and a short distance off the 78, you'll find cafes and a basic bike rental and maintenance shop. It's get you home, or get you further up the road to Oban to where there's a bike shop that's got loads of spares. We don't carry a lot of spares. Hmm and we try our best to get you up the road. The East Coast Road joins the road from Clameg and the Arran Ferry. And again. It's a steep climb up and over the spine of Kintyre. Then an unavoidable section of busy A83 into Talbot. For many, this is a good place to end the first day, and there are lots of accommodation options here. However, we have to buy food for tonight because we're riding further. Some people choose to miss out the Kilbury Loop. We're heading to the very tip of the peninsula to spend the night. Just breaking off that main A83 and already this ride feels completely different. It's uh, got a fantastic smell too. Wild garlic is pervading the air. Oh, I'm pleased we've done this loop and I've only gone a mile. There's beer causing problems. <laughs> the beer's causing problems. I can't quite grab on it, so I have a beer in my back pocket. <laughs> we brought a spare, lightweight extra bag to carry extra food for diversions like this. We have had some amazing views on this trip, but my goodness, can you believe this one? We're spending the night in a mobile home at Port Barn, where Sean cooked up a lovely dinner. I thought it was a great route. For me personally, I've not cycled like that. It's like a slower pace, um, and I normally go faster. But I can see the traction in just taking it gently, touring and enjoying the surroundings, which were fabulous. I was going as fast as I could. <laughs> I'm sure that's not quite true. <laughs> The Kilbury Loop turns back inland and continues with some superb views on quiet roads. Where it meets the main road, there's a backpacker's hostel. There's also a choice of route. We're taking the off-road version because we have gravel bikes. There are a couple of other sections, north of Fort William, where they're useful. I have been asked a question a couple of times in comments. Can I ride the Caledonia Way or the Great Glenway as it becomes on a road bike? While I feel a bit uncomfortable making that decision for other people, I would say that 
if you're riding on 23 to 25 millimeter skinny road tires then you probably are not going to get along very well you at risk of pinch flats you could be spinning all over the place however if you have on more like touring tires over 28 millimeter then certainly on the northern section that's off-road then you should be all right and I would say the same for this section too it's certainly better than riding on the main road which is the alternative in both cases I actually quite like the cycle path because it's more or less tarmac but it's got a tiny bit of gravel on it which means people can hear you when you're coming up behind them I've not got a bell sadly and there are a couple of road cyclists down there who are going a bit faster than us but they're going to have to contend with the traffic whereas all we have to contend with are dog walkers We followed the Crinan Canal into the yachty town of Crinan for lunch, then headed back onto the Caledonia Way. This was a short day for several reasons. Sean had to shuttle his car, and we both wanted to try King's Reach, a cycle-friendly, completely vegan B&B just off route. It also left time to visit a distinctive small hill nearby. The hill I'm heading up doesn't look particularly spectacular. And yet, this is probably one of the most important places in the entire history of Scotland. This is Dunad, the capital of the ancient kingdom of Dalriada. Rulers were crowned here. After the Romans left, the Gaels from Ireland settled, and this was the centre of their civilization in the early years of the first century. The people were called the Scotti, and as well as leaving their history, they left their name to the country today called Scotland. Back to Earth the next day, a flat car battery, and Sean has to get home tonight. But I have this dilemma, which I'm sure we all have, which is I really want to do today's ride because it looks like a great ride. I've not done any of it before, but is that being too gung-ho and risking actually other bigger issues at the end of the day? which will then affect the whole day, because I'll be worried about it during the day, so... One to think, yes, OK. So we're pondering right now. The next shot is either going to be us two riding together, or just me. So that is what happened, riding solo alongside one of Scotland's most beautiful inland locks. Sean's not going to want to hear this, but this has been one of the most beautiful sections of the Caledonia Way so far up the side of Loch Awe. It's constantly up and down, but there is a cafe at Dalave. I think it's interesting that on this trip we've eaten very, very few bars or gels. I've had about four bars, if that. The rest of the time it's all been real food. And my overriding memory of this is going to be bird song. Blackbirds, thrush, robin, they're all chirping away and it's almost constant. Hello ladies. Can I come past? Would that be okay? There you go. Weaponized cattle. <laughs> Uniquely Scottish issue. This section has all been on minor roads. It took me up the side of Loch Awe, then across to Tainalt, and back on myself slightly for the ride into Oban. That sign is quite important for anyone doing the full Caledonia Way, because it's warning that if you don't have to go into Oban, then from back there, it is easier to keep going to Connell. Once you go into Oban, you either come out the way we're going in, up a steep hill, or, there's another way which does start on cycleway, but it will end up on quite a busy road. We have links to mapping and the places we stayed in the video description and on this page of our website. If you'd like to see the whole Caledonia way in one video, then look out for this one in the Adventure Cycling playlist. Links to the next two sections of the Caledonia way are coming right now. 
I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have and you're continuing north, then these might be useful. This one takes you to Fort William and then this one the rest of the way to Inverness. If you hit the orange button and subscribe, that would be fantastic. And we'll see you again next time. Thank you.